Hello, welcome to Fabulous Food. Today I'm going to show you a designed pasta dish and this recipe actually came from one of our own pupils, Alice, in year eight. So thank you, Alice, for this. I hope I make it as well as you did. We ask you to bring in 250 grams of pasta, so any pasta shape will do, and also to bring in five of your 10 vegetables that you wrote about. So Alice chose courgette, onion, garlic, lemon, fruit, but we'll call it a vegetable for the sake of the recipe, and our cherry tomatoes. And her dressing or sauce that she chose was to add some cream to make our sauce. So those are all the ingredients. The first thing we get you to do when you come into the classroom is half fill a saucepan full of cold water from the cold tap and pop it on to boil. So I'm going to go and do that now before I prepare my vegetables. Once your water comes up to the boil, you can see the steam rising and the bubbles are very vigorous, like the movement of my fingers. You need to put your pasta in. So you get your colander, put your pasta into it like that, and then rest the colander on the edge of the saucepan. Hold on to the handle of the colander, which will be longer at school. They come to about here. Stand well back and just gently tip in one quick movement your pasta into the pan. And then to stop it sticking on the bottom of the pan, you're just going to give it just a couple of gentle stirs to make sure the pasta's not actually stuck to the bottom of the saucepan. And now my water's come back up to the boil. You can see the steam rising again. I'm going to turn it down to a medium heat, which will be about number four at school. And I'm going to set my timer for about 10 minutes. You need to check your pasta packet to see how long it needs to cook. But most pastas, it's about 10 minutes. So the first thing that Alice would have done would be to get her tomatoes, which she wanted to roast in the oven for 10 minutes. So the oven's been on at 180 degrees, so that's nice and hot. And I, she would have put them, just like I'm going to do, into a baking tin with, lined with baking parchment. It makes it easier to wash up afterwards. And then I'm going to put those in the oven. I'm going to drizzle a little bit of olive oil over them. Just a tiny bit. Roll them around, make sure that they will get coated in it. And then just put a little bit of seasoning on, so a little bit of black pepper. And a tiny little bit of salt to bring out the flavour of the tomatoes, but nothing that's going to harm us. And I'm going to put those in my oven for 10 minutes and set a timer. Alice's next instruction was to chop and add the onion and garlic to a frying pan. So I'm going to using a whole onion. So we remember we cut off the tip of the onion, hold it down so you can start peeling the onion, cut off the root. Again, hold it down and try and get some of that skin off because it helps you get your thumb under the layers. And peel right down all the brown layers that have come off until you get to a nice, clean, white, shiny layer. And then we know it's all edible. Move your peeling off the board and your garlic. It depends on the size of the cloves, but these are quite tiny, so I'm probably going to use two of those. We need to peel those. So again, slice the tip off, hold the knife down, get the peel started, slice the bottom of it off and then peel the papery skin away, ready for the garlic crusher. So I'm going to cut my onion in half with my bridge hold firmly gripping the onion and my knife rocking through the bridge. And then I'm going to turn each half of onion to the board with the flat side down, use my bridge again and come across and slice my onion probably five or six times for an onion this size. And then if you can hold it together, you can come across and dice your onion like that. So you're holding the onion with your pincer grip. So I'll show you again. Bridge hold, come across five or six times. And then if you find it easier, you can come across perhaps with just half of the onion at a time, if your hands aren't big enough to hold it all together. So that's my onion dice. And then to crush the garlic, open the garlic crusher, pop those in there, and then give it a really good squeeze. The garlic comes out the bottom, and squeeze that onto your onion. Clear my knife, open my garlic press. You can just kind of move your garlic around a little bit and have another go at pressing it. Sometimes you get a bit more to come through. 
and then I would normally just scrape the rest of it onto my board anyway, like that. So I've put some oil in my frying pan, or at school you'd be using a saucepan. I'm going to turn the heat on now to high, and I'm going to add my onion and my garlic. As the heat comes through the pan you'll begin to hear that sizzling so it's beginning to sizzle now so I'm going to turn the heat down to a medium heat which at school will be three or four because I don't want anything to burn in that pan I want it to just cook through very gently and now I can carry on preparing the rest of my ingredients so the next job is to grate the courgette I'm going to use the large holes on my grater and I'm not going to top and tail my courgette because it will give me something to hold on to, but I am just going to cut off that little nasty bit at the bottom. And then I'm not really sure, Alice, how many courgettes you use. You didn't state in the recipe. So I'm going to grate this one, which is quite big, and then I'll see how much courgette I've got. So you can see that by leaving this on here, it's giving me a handle. The timer's going off. That means my pasta's cooked. So I'm going to stop grating for a minute and I'm going to drain my pasta. So remember, when we drain the pasta, we take the colander over to the sink and put it in the sink. And come back to the oven and get your pasta and carry it over to the sink with two hands. Tip it into the colander so the boiling water goes down the sink and then leave your pasta to cool in your colander. Come back to my courgette. I'm looking in my grater and I'm thinking I probably need two courgettes because I know when I start cooking them, they're going to disappear to nothing because there's an awful lot of water in courgette. So I'm going to quickly grate this other one. My time is going off again. That's telling me the tomatoes have been in the oven for 10 minutes roasting. So I'll show you what those look like. So there's my tomatoes and by roasting them, I've really intensified the flavour in them. So I'm going to set those aside until I need them and carry on with my onion and garlic mix. So my onion and garlic now is ready for the courgette to go in the pan. I'm going to tip all of that courgette in. Scrape it off my board. And then just gently stir it to mix it in with the onion and the garlic. So when you stir, always go from the outside into the middle. And it stops your ingredients shooting out of the saucepan. And the heat from the pan is going to get all the water in that courgette to evaporate out. The courgette will shrink down and then I'll know that it's ready for the next ingredient. And while that's happening I'm going to get the sauce ingredients ready. So as I told you before Alice has chosen single cream so I'm going to tear the lid off of that ready. Again I'm not sure how much she used but we'll work it out as we go along. And she also added some lemon juice, so I'm going to use my bridge grip over my lemon. Slice the lemon in half, get my lemon juicer, and just extract the juice while my courgette is cooking. So my next job is to add the cream and some basil. Uh, Alice says to rip that, so here's my basil plant. I'm going to pull some leaves off of it. So tomato and basil is a real classic combination, and I'm sure that's why it was chosen. Some of these leaves aren't so nice at the bottom of the stem, so I'm not going to use those. So Alice says to rip this off. Actually, I'm going to just chop it because I think that's quicker. I can chop more leaves at once. So keeping my fingers well out of the way of the knife. Just chopping through a little bit like that. So now I'm going to add my cream and my basil to my courgette mix. Here's the basil. And there's the cream. So I think I'm going to use about two thirds of that pot to start with. Stir it in and see how much sauce that actually gives me. And then if it's looking a bit dry, I'll add the rest of the cream pot. So that's on a medium heat and I'm just going to leave it to simmer for a few minutes. So that's simmered down nicely now. I'm going to do a bit of seasoning. So I've got some black pepper to go in. Lots of black pepper and just a tiny bit of salt. The salt's not very good for us, but it does help bring out the flavour in food. I'm going to tip in my pasta. So where it's been sat in the colander, it's 
got a bit stuck together. So just use your spatula to separate it. I'm going to put my tomatoes in. And the lovely juices that have come from them. And at this point I'm going to turn the heat off because I don't want the dish to dry out too much and I'm just going to lift the pasta gently. I don't want to break the tomatoes up too much and by doing this I can bring the courgette and onion mix at the bottom of the pan to the top and spread it through the pasta. This looks really lovely Alice. So the final finishing touches to this are to add the lemon juice. So I've Juice my lemon, I'm going to pour the lemon juice over and then grate some parmesan cheese just to sprinkle on the top. So there's my lemon juice. My parmesan cheese. And that smells and looks delicious. So thank you very much for that recipe Alice. I look forward to trying that later. And we look forward to seeing the pasta dishes that you design in school. Bye bye.